Welcome to the TPC Desktop Video Series. In this video, we're going to look at the new Best Fit Line Routine in TPC Desktop 2016 Release 1. This will be available in uh, April or May of 2016. Uh, I've opened up a survey that uh, someone sent me from the East Coast where they do a lot of this uh, Best Fit line, uh, line of trees, an old rock wall. In this particular case, we've got a, a ditch that uh, is the property line. And basically, we're going to tie a number of points that are near that line, and then we're going to fit a best fit line through that um, and uh, see if we can't come up with a location for that line. Now, Traverse PC also includes a best fit curve routine that uh, computes an a average radius and puts it in for those points. This is for a horizontal tangent line. And uh, we're going to take a look at three ways that Traverse PC will let us compute this, using least squares, uh, fixing a bearing, and passing the line through uh, an existing point. So let's jump right in. I'm going to right click one of these points on this uh, ditch line. You can see we've tied these with a dashed blue line and left the point labels up. And all of the codes, points are coded with ditch or something that identifies it as a ditch point. I'm going to right click, choose Kogo, and right down here at the bottom you see this fit horizontal line. So that's the new command, fit horizontal line, and it opens up this horizontal line fit dialog box. Now, Traverse PC has selected this ditch traverse, and it selected the entire traverse. So I can go in and, and open this traverse and select just some of the points to fit, or in this particular case, I want to fit all of them. So I'm just going to leave this selected. Notice then that the next line down gives us the first and last points uh, in, this, in this traverse. So I'm going to fit the lines from 1532, so that's this point at the bottom south end of the ditch, to 1503. That's this last point up here at the top end of the ditch. Let's do our least squares computation first. So I just select the least squares from the option, I hit compute, and Traverse PC um, has this toggle down here that says create unique point labels on compute. So it looked at the first and last and it created unique point labels for the endpoints of the line. Now the rule in Traverse PC is that Traverse PC computes the line and creates endpoints for the new line that are as near as possible to the first and last points displayed here. So the first and last points that you selected for the computation, that's where it creates the endpoints of the line. And, and basically these um, Endpoints are going to be nearly perpendicular offsets to these uh, beginning and ending points, first and last points. So we've computed the uh, endpoints using least squares. I'm going to save and plot, save and plot. And let's just jump in here and take a look at what we actually did. So let's come in here in the north end of the line. Do you see this little uh, 1503 colon 1 here? I'll move it out of the way. That's the point we just created here. I drag it over here a little bit so you can see it. And I'm going to go ahead and double click that point, and that brings up the settings that are used to draw it. Let's recall settings for control loops. Let's make this red. And now Traverse BC is drawing that line in there, there for us. Now, these points were actually added to a point plot traverse. Let's go ahead and open that up for you here. This is where Traverse BC puts all of its points when you hit a plot button in a Kogo routine. And that's great because now I have the endpoints in a Traverse, and all I have to do is tell it how I want to draw that. And Traverse PC uh, draws that for me. If I scroll down here, I can see here's my all my uh, points that are in the ditch. Here's the line that it, it fit in there. They don't all fall exactly on the line, but they're they're pretty close. Now, one of the things that I really like about uh, the best fit line routine for Traverse BC is that addition, in addition to creating the endpoints of the line and plotting them for me, there's also a summary button here. And I'm going to just make sure that I've cleared the previous reports here so we can build these as we go. Let's hit the summary button now and take a look at what Traverse BC tells us about this computation. So it tells us that we did a horizontal line fit. We used the entire ditch traverse. We want to fit from 1532 to 1503. And then here's what we computed. We used a least square solution 
we computed the best fit line starting at 1532 colon 1 to 1503 colon 1, and here's the bearing of that line. Now, right underneath it are the coordinate endpoints of that line. But here's what I, I really like. Traverse PC gives us the offset of every point used in the computation to the line we just computed. So if I look at point uh, 1505 up here, it's to the right of this line based on this bearing. So 1505 down here, if I look at it, has an offset of 238. So it's 2.38 feet to the right of the line. Uh, 1504 right above it is 1.35 feet, but it's a minus, so it's left of the line. And you can see that, that visually. Okay, so real easy to select the points you want, pick the type of computation you want to do, and just hit the compute button, yeah, and, and you're done. Let's walk through the other uh, computations here real quick. Let's go ahead and do a fixed bearing. Now, I want this to be parallel to the first and the last point, so I just hit this button that says Compute First and Last, and it puts that bearing in. So I can see that the bearing that's parallel to the first and last is 21, 20, 46. If I look up here at my least square solution, the line that it computed was a north 21, 24, 46 west. So pretty, pretty close. I mean, it didn't tweak that line around too much, and I wouldn't expect it to because I have quite a number of points over quite a bit of, of distance here. So I've got the setup now for the fixed bearing. I'm gonna undo the last computation, and this is just the easiest way to do it for this video. So when I hit compute, it's basically gonna do those same point numbers again. I, I could compute different point numbers if I wanted for the endpoints, but I'm just leaving these the same for this video. And then I do the same thing. I save and plot, save and plot. So it gives me that same line back, but it now is the position based on this fixed bearing computation. So I see I've drawn my line, best fit line in again, and it doesn't go quite in the same place, I can see. So I probably want to go right to that summary and say, what did it give me? So here's my best fit line routine. Same information as far as the given, entire ditch traverse. Here's the points. But this time I'm using a fixed bearing, and here's that bearing. 21, 20, 46. So that's going to be the bearing of the line that gets computed. Here are the endpoints of the line. And let's go and come down and just look at that 1505 and 1504 again. So 1505 now is still to the right of the line, but it's only 1.98 feet. Remember before, 1505 was 2.38. So now it's 1.98. 1504 is still off to the left like it was before but its distance now is a minus 1.79. And then, of course, each uh, computation, each summary, tells you that the sum of the offsets is zero, or very nearly zero, because that's the uh, constraint of the computation. Okay, so now we see what a fixed bearing line looks like. Let's uh, tell Traverse PC now, this time, we want to compute a line that passes through point 13. It maybe instead of extending this line up and creating an intersection up here for our property corner, maybe we found something here that we think um, uh, might be uh, what we want to hold, maybe a, a wooden post. And we were just wondering, you know, how would that fit this ditch um, if we held that and ran the property line through it? So we're just doing kind of a what if and maybe here. So let's come back to our horizontal line fit. Let's tell Traverse BC to pass this line through point 13. And we can type it here or pick it out of the drawing. And just like you did with the others, let's undo and compute. Let's save and plot. So here is our line passing through uh, 13. If we want to kind of see what that looks like, let's open our traverse up. And uh, let's come down and just add point 13 to it. Oh, let me come over to the point label and put that in. And now it will actually draw up through that point for us. We can see um, how, that, how that works. And I want to come down to the summary for this and um, have it show me how close I am. So this time we're doing the entire uh, ditch traverse again, but we're passing through point 13. So Traverse PC computes a new line 
that line has a new bearing, has new endpoints. And if I come down and look at these same points again, I'm back to 3.41 feet to the right at 0 0.1505. And 0 0.1504 is now just 22 hundredths left of the line. And I would expect these points near 13 probably to be a little closer and maybe the points at the other end of the line to be a little farther away because my only constraint was that it passed through point 13 and then create a best fit line through the ditch points. Uh, now let's switch ends and let's go down to the other end of this line and uh, let's say that uh, we found something down here at the south end at 14. Uh, once again, maybe we found a post or something there. So let's compute the line through 14, not 13, and uh, have it compute the best fit. So we're going to come back. I like to just select that again so it updates the dialog. So we're back to our, our ditch. We've got our first and last points. Let's just change this to 14. Let's undo these. Compute. Save and plot. Now, in our traverse up here, uh, we had actually um, uh, deleted those points when we did the undo. That's kind of nice. And I'm simply going to replace 13 with 14. Traverse BC recalls it and draws this line for us. So now we can see that our best fit line passes through 14 and all of our um, uh, ditch points. So right away, like we've done before, let's uh, hit the summary button. Let's come back up here and take a look at what Traverse PC computed for us. Again, we're doing the entire ditch. This time we're passing through point 14. So once again, we've got a, a computed line with its bearing and endpoints. And we can come down and, and look and say, okay, what's our fit at 1505 or our fit at 1504 or whatever. And the great thing is now in this report, I've got the results from four different computations uh, of this line. So I can come back and look at this and say, you know what, I'm most comfortable with maybe the least square solution or maybe the fixed bearing solution or maybe I want to pass this through point, point 13 or maybe I want to pass that through point 14. But I've got uh, some great uh, results here and a printout that I can stick in the folder and say this is why I chose to hold point 14 and fit the line through the rest of the the uh, ditch points. A great little tool in Traverse BC, um, particularly those folks back on the East Coast that uh, have asked for this. I think uh, this will do this best fit line in spades for you, and uh, you'll be able to uh, compute these lines pretty readily with uh, some great information to back up your decisions.